Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Hooray, 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 hooray. Thank goodness the telephone. Listen, don't ring so loud. Shh, you'll disturb David. Hello. Claudia, is that you? Oh, Mom, I'm so glad to hear even your voice. Why, what's the matter? Well, even your voice sounds good to me. Probably because I haven't heard a human voice in hours. Didn't David come home tonight? Mm, yes, he's home. Sort of. And what's wrong? Well, he's home with a lot of work to do. He left me all forlorn in the living room with Shakespeare. He's in the study with his blueprints. Does he blueprints? I get the picture. Say, Mama, how are you? How's New York? Fine, fine, fine. How's the baby? Well, considering he's your grandson, he's not bad. Why don't you go upstairs and talk to him? Oh, that way lies madness. What have you been doing all evening? I have been reading a book. Oh, no. You? Oh, yes, I. Well, how'd you like reading a book? Well, I think it is terribly overrated. All this fuss people make about how wonderful it is to have an evening alone reading a book. They've obviously never done it. I'd much rather talk. Maybe if you read a good book. <laughs> Just try and find one. I'm fed up with most books, at least modern ones. And you only 19. Well, I think books are all either just like life, so why bother reading them, or else they're not at all like life, so why bother reading them? They all have a girl and a boy and other people. Why don't you darn some socks? They're all darned. You seem to forget it's been raining a great deal lately. Well, I didn't call up to tell you how to spend your time, so... Mama, I... Mama, don't hang up. I've nothing more to say. You hang up, I'll have to go back to that book. Goodbye, Claudia. This is a fine way to treat your only child. Goodbye, child. Listen, Mama, you hang up, I'll... Yes, I'll... you'll what? Listen, what'd you call up about in the first place? Nothing. I'm going to say goodbye now, because no. I know you're just bursting to get back to your reading. All right, then. As bad as it is, it is better than talking to you. Mama? What now? Listen, do you have a decent dinner? None of your business. What are you doing tonight? None of your business. Still early, why don't you go to a movie or something? Instead of just sitting home alone. When I want your advice, I'll ask for it. Mm, and you never want it. Right. Give David my love. Now, what makes you think he wants it? Because he knows a good thing when he sees it. Why, Thank you, Mama. That was a very sweet thing to say to me. I appreciate yeah, it. You're an idiot. Goodbye. Good night, Mama. <sighs> Who's that, darling? Only Mama, David. Only Mama? Yep. Since when is Mama only Mama? Well, she's the only Mama we've got, isn't she? How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? No, oh, just another hour's work or so, and then I'll be finished. Are you tired? No, not a bit. Feel fine. You sure you... Don't want to stop working. Yes, I'm sure I don't want to stop working. Oh, that's what I thought. Cluck, I want to, but I can't. In that case, go on, get back. Don't <laughs> loiter. Always bossing. How's that book you're reading? Terrible. What's the matter with it? Well, I don't know. It feels as if I read it before. Maybe you have. Uh, David, if I had read it before, what would I be doing reading it now? I would not attempt to fathom your mind. The reason it feels as if I read it before, it's like every other book I read before. I was just telling Mama I know exactly what happens. Hmm? What happens? Well, how would I know? I haven't finished. Look, you just said no, that... No, no, skip it. Here, give it to me. Oh, no, darling, you'd hate it. You wouldn't read it for five minutes. It's such bad style. Oh? Since when are you a literary critic? Well, I know a well-written book when I read it. You do? I love Dickens, and I love Mark Twain. Grimm's fairy tales. I like Hawthorne, too. Short stories like O. Henry, I like them. This book, and it's a bestseller, too. I hate it. Here, let me see. Here. He was angry with her, so angry that he knew he loved her. Now, can you imagine? Hmm. One could hate only somebody one loved so much, and as he looked at her now, he felt a fist inside <laughs> him, pulling at him, making him want him to, to rush to her. I see what you mean. I bet you thought I didn't know a good book from beans. I thought no such thing. <laughs> Well, think what you will. I will. But if you think I'd have married a woman who likes reading trash, you, you just don't know me at all. David, I think this is the time to confess something. All right, go on. All right, speak up. Well, it's just that I... Well, 
I don't like books with history in them, even <laughs> if they're good. I <laughs> know. You never were any good at history. You don't think that's awful? Mm, no one's perfect, not even my wife. Now, that's sweet of you to say so. Oh, when I leave, when I go back to work, I'll find something. Isn't there one book in the house that you haven't read? Of course, but I haven't read that one. It's it's because I didn't want to before, so why should I want to now? No, darling, stop fussing about me. Go back to your work. Go on. You'll be through work sooner. I can't have you sitting around with nothing to do. It would wear my, wear my conscience thin. <laughs> Since when? Is that all the thanks I get? No, I didn't mean it. You're very sweet. No, well, that's worse. I repeat, go back to your work. Stop talking nonsense. I will manage. I couldn't work knowing that you were pining away with nothing to read. Well, I'll comb Shakespeare. Come here, Shakespeare. Here, kitty, 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 kitty. Why don't you read him instead? I have. You want to hear a quote? Yes, I'll hear a quote. For sooth. Who is sooth? Ouch. I suppose you thought I meant the deep sooth. Now, that should drive you back to work. Go on. You'll be up all night and I get so sleepy. Say... I think I have a book for you to read. David, I told you I read every book in the house. Yeah, wait a well, minute. Well, practically. David, you don't know how long the days can be up here. Endless. I have even been thinking of joining the library. Do you think I should... David, where are you going? Upstairs to get it. Oh, listen, come back here. I don't want you to make a trip upstairs for nothing. If it's upstairs, I probably read it anyway. I don't think you have. Well, listen, just answer me the questions before you go running upstairs in vain. Firstly... Is it a book with some excitement in it? I mean, you know, a book where things happen. Mm, things happen in this book all the time. Oh. Is there murder in it? Yes. Yes, there are murders in it. Many murders, as a matter of fact. Well, what about the style? The best. Love stories? Yep, love stories, too. Well, David, if it has murders and love stories in it, it's probably trashy. I told you I hate trashy books. This book I was reading, very trashy. You uh, won't find this book trashy. Is it trite? No, no, not trite. Hmm? You've probably heard a lot of the things in it, but no, no, it's not trite. Is it an old book or a new book? It's a bestseller. I'll go get it. I'll be right back. Bestseller, and I haven't read it. It's funny. Usually I don't like bestsellers, though, David. I'm warning you. Well, I'll go up and get it in any case. If you don't like it, there won't be anything lost. It's awfully sweet of you to bother about me. I wish you wouldn't, though. No bother. I feel very guilty taking you away from your work. I expected this sort of thing when I got married. What else did you expect? It would break your heart to hear. No. Oh. Darling, listen, you really didn't have to go all the way up and get me that now. All right, here we are. Here's your book. David, this book is the Bible. That's right. Have you read it? Of course I've read it. I've read it ever since I was a little girl. I read it in Sunday school. You know, I know you've read the Bible, darling. Everybody has to a certain point, but have you ever read it as just a good book? What do you mean? Well, it's, it's all of the things that I told you it was, written in the most beautiful style. Listen to the language as you read it. Still, it has adventures in it and murders in it and, and love in it. Some of the greatest stories ever told her in it. You know, you're amazing. Now, here. If you're interested in a murder story, you can read The Murder of Abel at the hands of his brother Cain. Right here now. Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. That's a very ancient conflict. And it's quite a story. Well, I guess a person just doesn't know a man, even if she's married to him a year and a half. And if you want a real story of adventure, there's the story of how Joseph's brothers were jealous of him and threw him into a pit in the desert, and then they brought his coat of many colors home to their father. And they said that Joseph was killed in the desert by a wild beast. Yeah, that's, that's quite a story, too. David, you know, I never read the Bible except on Sunday. I mean, I never... Th thought of it as a book to read. Now, if you want a story of love, there's the story of Mary and the story of Stephen, the story of Paul and of Deborah. Yeah. There are quite a few stories in the Bible. Think that you've been hiding this from me all this time. What's that, darling? 
Haven't you heard a word I've been saying? Well, haven't you heard a word I've been saying? Well, I was talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was, too. <laughs> I was telling you about some of the stories I thought you'd like to read. You know, there's a whole life in you, David, that I know nothing about, isn't there? Ah, nonsense. Well, there is. Don't say nonsense. It's true. You know it. And I didn't. David, why have you kept all this a secret, sort of? Well, I, I, I haven't kept anything a secret. I, I've kept nothing a secret, and it's nothing to owe and ah about. Oh, that's where you're wrong, darling. Oh, this is the best part about marriage. What is? Well, there's so much to learn about you and from you. Don't roll your eyes around like that. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> You just can't take a compliment with good grace, can you? No, ma'am. Give me the book, David. I I think I'd like to read it. Yeah. Let me pick you a good story. Right. Mm, There's so many of them, I don't know which one to choose. David, will you do something for me? What? It's nice. All right, darling. Read aloud to me, David. I mean, if you have a moment. All right, we'll take a moment. Here we are. The Book of Ruth. Do you know the story of Ruth among the alien corn? Read it to me. It's quite a tale. And it's not the least bit dated. There are many Ruths these days sent out of their country to a foreign land. Here, now read this part. And Ruth went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on the part of the field belonging unto Boaz. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem. The red cooler that invites you to have a Coke is a familiar and welcome sight on the highway, in shops, at theaters, sports events, and all sorts of public places. There's a white cooler which can be just as inviting... And that's the refrigerator in your own kitchen. Keep your white cooler well stocked with Coca-Cola, and you'll be able to pause and refresh whenever the spirit moves you. Hello? Uh, Joe King speaking. This is Mrs. Brown. How are you, Joe? Fine. Good to hear your voice again, Mrs. Brown. Tell me, is Claudia busy now? Why, uh, she's just settled down with a book, a good book. Then don't disturb her. I'll speak to her in the morning. Uh, Say, Mrs. B., uh, when are we going to see you up here? Soon, I hope. Coming up for the weekend? Well, we'll see. Good night, Joe. Good night, Mrs. Brown. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember... Whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now... Here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.